Hello there, this is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC, and I'm back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to update the BIOS on a Gigabyte X570 Aorus Elite motherboard, even if you don't have a CPU or memory or GPU installed. And you might be wondering, why would I ever want to do that? Well, the main reason you might want to do that is if you have a newer processor that's not supported by the existing BIOS on this motherboard. So if you have a Ryzen 5000 series processor, you might have a problem where it has an older BIOS from the factory and it won't work with your brand new CPU. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. And this works on a bare motherboard with no CPU installed and it also works on a fully assembled system. And I'll talk about what you have to do to make sure that that works later in the video. These are the key steps to using QFlash Plus. I'm not going to read every single step. You can pause it and read them yourself, but it's important that you watch the entire video and follow the directions exactly. Otherwise, you're likely to miss something and it probably won't work. So the first thing you have to do is download the correct BIOS file for your motherboard. And this is a very common mistake that people don't download the right file. They go to a different motherboard that's similar. So I would check the box that you have, your motherboard box, and make sure that you have the exact right model. So in this case, it's the X570 Aorus Elite Revision 1.0. And when you come into Gigabyte's website, you'll probably start off on the key features page like I am here. So you want to switch to the support page. And once you switch over to that page, you can see all the different downloads they have here. And you want to go to the BIOS section. And then you'll see all the different BIOS versions that have been released. And at the time of recording, this one right here, F36E, is the latest version of the BIOS. So that's what I want to download for this motherboard. So I'll go ahead and do that. And it comes down really fast. It's only a, a tiny zip file. It's about 11 megabytes. After you download the file, you need to find it on your system. By default, with most browsers, it'll be in your downloads folder. So that's where it is right here. And the first thing you need to do is unzip the zip file. This is really important. So just right click and you do extract all and that will extract the zip file. So now I have another directory that shows the four files that were in that zip file. And the only file that I actually need for this procedure is the actual BIOS file right there that's about 16 megabytes in size, so it's quite small. So that's what we need to use for this. And then after you have that, you need to change the name of it to gigabyte.bin. So you go and just rename it to gigabyte and then change the file extension to bin. Just like that. And this is really important. And you're going to get a warning when you change the file extension, which is fine. So now we've changed the name of this file to gigabyte.bin. And we don't need these other three files. And if you're using this QFlash Plus procedure, this is what the file name has to be. So now we've got that ready to go. And then you have to have a USB flash drive. And I've got one down here. It says Patriot 8 gigabyte. And it's an 8 gigabyte USB 2.0 flash drive. And what you want to do with your flash drive is go and look at the properties of the flash drive. And then make sure that it's formatted in FAT32, not NTFX, NTFS, or XFAT. It's really important that it's FAT32. FAT32, so I'm all set up. And then you have to copy this gigabyte.bin file down to the root of the USB flash drive. And the root just means the top of the drive, not in a folder or directory. And it's okay if there's other things on the drive, but I like to do this with an empty drive. But make sure that it's gigabyte.bin and it's in the root of the drive and the drive is formatted with FAT32. Now, before we go any further, I just want to show some frequently asked questions. I'm not going to read them to you. You can pause it and read them yourselves. But these questions come up over and over and over again on previous videos. So hopefully these will answer the most common questions that you might have. And again, please watch the entire video so you don't miss any steps because this is a fairly tricky procedure. 
The next step is to get the motherboard ready to go. So first you plug in the EPS power connector, the eight pin connector right there at the bottom left. Then you've got to plug in the 24 pin main power connector. And I've got this on a test bench, but this works perfectly fine on top of your motherboard box. So you have to have a power supply and you plug in the EPS connector and then the 24 pin main connector. And that's all you need to plug in. The next step is to find the correct USB port. The one labeled BIOS that's colored white is the one that you want to use. So just plug in that USB drive that you prepared before into that port. And that's all there is to that step. Next, turn on the switch on your power supply if it has a switch. You also want to make sure your power supply is plugged into the wall. Next, you need to locate the white Q Flash Plus button that's close to the CMOS battery. I'm zooming into it right here. Now you start the process by pressing the Q Flash Plus button. You only need to hold it down for a second or two, and then it'll start flashing the BIOS. This process should take four to five minutes, not a few seconds and not an hour. If your USB drive has an LED, it'll flash intermittently like mine is right here. But don't worry about that very much. What you'd want to worry about is the BIOS flash LED right next to the button that you pressed. That's the only LED that really matters and you want to watch that. Again, this should take four to five minutes and when it's done, that LED will stop flashing. That's the way you know whether it's done or not. And once it's done flashing, then you either want to turn off your system or unplug it from the wall. And then you want to plug it back in and turn it on and see if it will post. So that's how you know that whether it's done or not. And that's all you need to worry about is that LED, not whether or not any fans are spinning or anything else is happening. So what do you do next? Well, if you've got a bare system like this, you just need to turn off the power supply and unplug it and then assemble it and see if it will post. If it's a completed system, just go ahead and turn it off and then turn it on normally and see if it works. That's all there is to it. And you really can't tell whether or not it worked until you try to turn it on and see if it will post. Really? You have a lot to say. This is Glenn Berry with Dr. DMV LLC and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. And finally, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe because that really helps the channel out.